Thank you all and welcome back to Breathing is Highly Dangerous. This is Emmanuel here. I'm joined with OG, the one, the only, the original. Um, yeah, what's up guys? I'm back and I'm here to flip your world upside down with, you know, my viewpoint. Agree with it or disagree? Not my problem because I'm going to say what I need to say and you're going to listen. So today we're going to talk about Gen Z fashion. Bring and- bullying back. And bringing bullying back and why it makes sense to bring it back. So there definitely is a lack of subcultures nowadays. They still exist, but it's so um, the lines have been so blurred with uh, with subcultures where now one wants to borrow from another and you don't know what the hell are you looking at. It's like, who are you goth? Are you an emo? Are, are you a metalhead? No, you're an e-boy. What, what, what is an e-boy? What, is the, what does that actually stand for? I'm not even trying to throw shade. I really don't know what it means. Or e-girl. I don't know, because it sounds like e-cig, like electronic. I don't know. Oh, maybe that is what it stands for, like e-commerce, electronic. Yeah, but yeah, it, it doesn't really mean anything. And when you don't have defined borders for things, then you're not going to you're not going to have like an actual style. So it's like, I I always tell people like, you gotta have to have a, like when you have a song, you have to have a bass. Otherwise, if you don't have like a bass to the song, like either percussion or an actual bass guitar, then the song is going to fall flat. Unless it's a song that's just about percussion, but right. Oh, wait a minute. I would still have to have like a bass and some sort of rhythm, but there isn't really much rhythm in today's fashion. I should say. Right. There's a lot of clashy or, very uh muted you know uh, uh, and and a lot of things that uh non-creativeness there's there's nothing there's nothing that is eye capturing in a unique and positive sense like it's something new that we haven't seen before it's like oh they're just dressing like the past this, like people right, just read Right. old styles from the 70s 80s like, 90s, 2000s. Wait, i'm unique i'm dressing like the 70s era <laughs> what unique well, if those if these same people i were gonna talk we're gonna bash gen z and gen alpha like if you're gonna be like hating on those eras so much about how people were the crime rate was higher and things were violent people were meaner but those experiences then obviously shape them to be interesting individuals, which is the reason why in this exact modern era of 2023, October 10th, you guys keep trying to, you know, vilify. Yeah. China. If uh, you're trying to reinvent that whole era, it's a hypocrisy Mm. to me. Either you don't like it or you do like it, but you guys romanticize. But then again, in their defense, people do, in that era, also romanticized the past and like people romanticize, you know, Roman culture and they don't look at it on the flip side where they're just like, oh yeah, well, they did conquering of this country, that country, this country, that country, and the other. So, I mean, there's two sides to both stories, to to the um, to the story or whatever. And um, nowadays, you just, people just, Sorry. is that a sneeze? Yeah. That was very like muted, but kind of violent. Um, what he did was even more unique than half the things I see people do nowadays. People, oh, I'm definitely try... controlling my sneeze. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll shout out. I'll be like, I'll do like, I'll, I'll take my <laughs> sneezes and do. I see the Jackson things. Five back there. In, yeah, the Jacksons to the to the right. Yeah, so yeah, in right. your the in Jacksons, your room. Bill Cosby, the Spinners, Pipes of Peace. Get, the only reason I have Pipes of Peace right here is because of Michael Jackson, though. Because he's on there with two songs with Paul McCartney. Oh, wow. But yeah, like, look at those records. Not a single modern one there. Because music and fashion and culture then was so cohesive that you were able to identify those eras. What is the theme of 2020? Tell me. I have not seen a single person even, or even the 2010s. Every Perception. Time. Perception? No, perception and deception. Yep. What do you mean by that? Ouchy Fauci. I don't know what that means. Uh, COVID is the, the defining trait of 
Uh, oh, uh, Fauci, Doctor Fauci, got it. Uh, Fauci, Fauci. But um, are you vaccinated or unvaccinated? That's the most unique thing people have. Uh, if you're unvaccinated, <laughs> <laughs> that's people's defining trait. Right. Um, yeah, people. I, I yeah, like I'm just gonna use my college campus campus for example. So when I'm walking around, people constantly stare at me like they just saw a demigod. And at first I was just kind of like, okay, this is weird. And um, and then as of recently- Ooh, black it's a people, black guy people, in New York. <laughs> like there are a thousand black dudes in New York. Um, a million, millions at that. Um, yeah, so it's just like, okay, this is kind of weird. But then like people started asking me like for fashion advice or like, we love your outfit. It was, compliments are great, but I'm just like, we're literally in the fashion capital of the world. And you're telling me that people look so homogenous that even when I put together a very minimal outfit that it stands out that much from you guys, you all wear this. It's really crazy to me that everybody wears skinny jeans, these like nut huggers. Everybody oh, wears... I have a secret. Can you keep it? I don't know how to dress, even though I'm in New York <laughs> and I <laughs> try to wear just my best. That's funny. Um... Yeah, like nobody has, I mean, there are some people with individuality and the people that try to be original end up looking so weird that they're just, they end up looking like the other weird people. Like I've noticed that people try to dress like runway models now where they wear the eccentric like outfits where it's like, oh, you're wearing platform shoes. You're just throwing on this raggedy piece of clothing, that raggedy piece of clothing. And you're like, it's so avant-garde. I'm like, okay, then why did 300 other people I walked by look exactly like that? Right. It's not original to be weird anymore. Hey, Being give me a normal second. is considered unique now. That is the point of society that we've gone to. I, yeah, I, I, at my school, I just cannot, I just really, not, not even trying to throw shade, I really cannot tell them apart at times. There are a few people that actually just seem kind of normal-ish, but... Right, what normal means nowadays is like... Yeah, being normal will, you know, you'll be seen as an outcast because when people ask me like, oh, what's your Instagram? I'm just like, I would just give you my phone number because I don't use Instagram as my primary form of communication. People think something is wrong with me. I've had women not want to talk to me because I don't give up my Instagram because they use it as a, as a tool for, for status. And so they could look at more of your outfits and getting inspiration from them because people have seen the outfits I've put together on Instagram. But I haven't even been posting my outfits like that as of recently, maybe on my story or something like that. And... But that that's just to, you know, uphold the image because I'm an actor and I and I have to show, you know, to the you know, the, these casting directors, the gatekeepers of the industry, because now nah, I've been following the right pages and getting in contact with the right people, what I'm capable of. But other than that, if I wasn't involved in the in that particular world of artistry, then I probably wouldn't be doing anything like that. Right. And that's my failure as a as a attempted actor. I, I'm st- I'm thinking about getting back into it. But even when I was doing it, I, I it's i just can't like the social media thing to me is it's too competitive now i don't derive pleasure from it i i i feel like my body is rejecting this 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 anti-social this not anti-social but this parasocial apparatus apparatus or whatever these apps and stuff Uh, i'm sure i can make it curtailed where i'm and specialize it to make it better for myself but I, I don't like investing time into things i don't i don't i i guess i can see where the success can come from if i was consistent with it and that's why i had to put myself back in that headspace of yeah it, it's become so competitive where to the point it's not even fun anymore where social media before i literally i'm looking back even through my old instagram page um just like, yeah, people just and just looking at other people's older Instagram posts. Yeah, people just seem like to be taking photos in the moment. Like it was social media wasn't invented just overnight, like yesterday. It's been a growing, a growing platform, and Instagram was around in 2011, but it was used so differently while I was in high school. It was even different when I first went to the first time I went to college. But now that I'm back and it's just like, you know, almost that was like almost 10 years ago, like I started in like 2014 or whatever. It it's just it's it's just become toxic. Right, the, girls now, at least same girls that would have been bullied then, are now like the weird girls that everybody praises now with the thick eyelashes. They look like camels. 
And if you're listening to this and you fit that description, I hope you're offended. Please DM me. We could have a whole conversation about what, what does this mean? What, what do you, the, what the eyelash? Is? Oh yeah. 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 The eyelashes, they look like they're fluttering in, in the wind. Yes. And, um, yeah, they're actually terrifying. And, and they think they swear they're a ton. Yeah. But I think they forgot one little thing to put like a dash in front of it. So it's a negative 10. Like, right. Like, and, I do it for myself. I, I, I'm like, okay, right. Yeah, that's so. like peak narcissism right there. I do it for myself. Because you don't think about what other people have to say because you're not accepting to criticism, which is definitely an issue with Gen Z, specifically the ones born in the 2000s and uh, Generation Alpha. I can talk because I'm a millennial because I was born in 1995. I'm at the cusp. But still, despite me being only five years older than somebody born in 2000 there seems to be a world of a difference it's really bizarre i didn't think it was going to be such a stark difference but it is definitely a stark difference i talk to kids now on campus and ask them oh we've heard of this barry white song nobody knows what i'm talking about they don't they barely know anything outside of their limited scope of being alive why is it that i know music from the 1950s and 60s where all they know is music that just happened in the last 10 years if even that Right. They think Soldier Boy is like a relic. I remember exactly what I was doing the first time I ever heard of Soldier Boy. September 2007, my friend told me about Soldier Boy. I remember, and I still talk to that friend up till this very date. So, see, I'm I'm I'm, I'm far removed from. I, I I only understand. I I didn't even know what was happening during what was happening was happening because I wasn't allowed to listen to to, to secular music. <laughs> <laughs> Until, like until a the, certain point. So now all I listen to is stuff. The Jehovah Witnesses call it worldly music. Yeah. Worldly. Oh, my God. So, um, yeah, there's just it, people in fashion have just become so inclusive that now also it is very difficult to even find good outfits. Like I, I went out with my friends or whatever the other day because they were like, please give us fashion advice. I'm like, okay. And so we went on all these thrift stores and they were just like, I'll go through the the different aisles of clothes. And this is how I search for stuff. Like I use my index finger and I just kind of sift through like over a hundred pieces and under like, I don't know, a minute. And I'm like, yeah, I can't find anything. And I look at the fabrics and textures and can't find anything. And then they were just like, I'm not finding anything either. Cause I'm like, because the last five stores we visited all look the same because all it's like fast fashion. Yeah, it's fast fashion. Last. It's killing real fashion. Yeah, nothing's built to last. I literally have shirts now that I buy that get little, little micro, not even microscopic holes, but they're extremely small little holes that start to develop because it's just like the purpose for it to become, you know, destroyed so you can, uh, you, so you can buy um, more clothing from the same companies, but. All that tells me is just like I shouldn't Don't, buy. I shouldn't buy that because your clothing is quality. quality. But I have clothes that my aunt from England gave to me when I was a kid. That like she would literally say, "When you grow up, then you could start wearing it." That still lasts to this date. I right. took some of my parents' clothing that's from the freaking eighties and nineties. That clothing was made of quality and still lasting to this very date. It's clear that in the last. I would really even say 15 ish years, very, very, very slow decline of uh, quality of clothing because, you know, they outsource it to, you know, other countries, China, India, or places, and even, I don't know, Guatemala, I don't know, right. places overseas. And um, so, yeah, they're going to use cheaper, you know, quality because the goal for companies is profit. That's all it is. Things are so profit driven, and society as a whole is so profit driven that people don't remember to have fun it's the same thing with influencers they are so profit driven that they um they make every interaction about how they could boost their image and people think it's so weird at my school that i'm not really in competition of all that because i'm like it's not paying my bills i have rent to pay i don't care about all of that right and then when i'm not wor- focused on work i don't want to be focused on doing something that takes work i want to be enjoying my time with the people i'm around right Rather exactly than, than capturing the moment i'm living the moment you know yeah and a lot of people struggle tell me i'm just saying for personal experience people are telling me these things they're like how do you live in the moment and i'm like because i'm not on my phone all the time so a lot of times because i'm hanging out with you and i'm engaging the conversation i would forget to respond to text 
and it's like especially Instagram messages. People were just like, I've literally had people told people that, hey, like I don't use as my primary form of communication, and you're not going to be interested in the things that I post. Here's my phone number. Do that shit and go out of their way and still try to look me up and stalk me online and then follow me on Instagram and get mad I don't follow their account back. And they're like, why don't you follow? I'm like, I told you, don't follow me. I literally gave you specific instructions. Don't follow me. I don't care. And then now you're upset. It's just like seeing a, seeing a sign that says danger, cliff ahead. And then you're just like, oh, boy, I see. There's no road they can tell you. So they just blast through the side. Wait a minute, where's your cliff? Well, I'm about to fall. And then you fall all the way to the bottom and then you die. Same concept. Y'all are <laughs> stupid. I hate all of you. And if you're listening to this podcast or watching us interact with each other right now on the video on this YouTube page thingy then i hope you're offended because that's my that's my goal is to offend you because bullying needs to be brought back bullying yeah. needs to be brought back amen public shaming not this stupid cyber bullying either that is just it's herd mentality where people all have the same collective idea and the people that do have an idea that may be on the contrary are too afraid to speak up so they bully me just like the girl that you remember the girl that i showed you that mm -hmm. you know bully did the cyberbullying thing but it's just like not a single one of them would say that to me in person not a single one of them like i see you guys on campus like you don't say anything to me right and, and that's the thing it's like people have this fake sense of confidence online because they they create this persona or uh, they they try to make the ideal version of themselves sticking up for themselves online because they feel like there's going to be at least somebody to back them up right yeah, but then, you, then, then, and then you see sometimes in conflict, or even on online, people start backing down. It's like, and then issuing apologies for, uh, like, if if they get attacked for and their idea is seen as is as as derivative or or uh, deviant or against what everyone else in this you know area of the internet likes, then they come after you, and then they try to dox you and stuff. It's like. Eh. So the, those things do translate sometimes if someone feels offended enough, but it's like, this person, this person just said something, some words on fucking line. What's your problem? If someone said this to your face, are you going, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're, you're behind your computer. Yeah, it's like, absolutely ridiculous, man. I can't stand it. Like, uh, uh, some people, uh, uh, if... People don't know how to it, how to have conflict in person. It's like, uh, if you disagree with me, okay, are you smart enough to argue your position in my face? All right, and the same thing happens in like in class where we've had to debate on topics, and I'm the only one talking to the professor because I'm the only one, uh, and it's not even like the professor gives his viewpoint. It's just like here's a topic to discuss, discuss it. And here's a controversial topic. What do you, what is your take on this, and how does it relate to the text that we're reading? This modern topic, how does it relate to that? And right. the answer answer is to the point where the, my professors are just like, somebody other than Oji, please talk. But I'm just trying to keep my grade up. That's done with as a strategy, where it's like I know if I'm the first to volunteer, first to go forth, then in their mind they're always going to know that I'm going to speak and I'm participating in this class. So therefore you get tired of me talking and so therefore i'm gonna get a higher grade because participation is great right so it's people like don't every, even think that deep anymore it's like every book is huckleberry finn or tom sawyer it's like um nigger tom uh or what's the boy's name in that book it, it, the one that's right with him on the boat he's like i don't want to say that word no, don't say it well i think this book is problematic because it, it has a bad word i'm like okay uh uh, the 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 black boy went on the boat with the person that you said is insensitive, and they came back. He didn't kill them; they were friends. Do you have a problem with friendship between a white boy and a black boy? Um, no, but uh, wait. So, what's your problem here? Um, the racially insensitive epithet. Oh, okay, okay. Why is it that when people always have to like say slurs, it's always about black people every fucking time? I could I could probably count on two hands the amount of times that like people use like slurs as a term of endearment to describe another race. Rarely, I can count. Like, I don't know if there is one. I really is like it? 
I mean, there are, but like people don't really, if people didn't really use them, like, let me throw not like that rapper Nob under the bus. He's a prime Ooh. example. That Indian rapper from Scarborough in Toronto, he does that shit. Um, who else? There's what does he call her? He, he and say pack. No, I'm saying he says black slurs as a term of endearment. Nav does it. Six Nine does it. Um, there's another rapper. His name is Little Darky, and I thought he was black when I looked him up. He was Indian too. I was like, "What the hell?" And people like this guy. I'm like, this dude is like blatantly racist. I'm like, your name is literally Little Darky, and you're out here saying plenty of different slurs in like all your songs against people. But, like, I guarantee if I were to turn around through saying slurs against you guys, I'd be canceled. And I'm partially right. Indian myself. I'm like every race. I would really give, just have a pass from everyone to say whatever I want because I am those things. Ridiculous. But it's absolute hypocrisy. That's what I can't stand is the hypocrisy of people nowadays and the hypocrisy of specifically, like I said, for the topic of this this podcast is Gen Z. Right. I, I think... If if bullying was brought back in person, I think people would have uh, better conflict resolution skills. They would, and people generally don't. They have zero conflict resolution skills. A better ability. Kids are barely to, disciplined nowadays. They can't They're regulate like, their emotions. There's like they get. All. They say, "I'm triggered." Triggered by what? What someone said to you that? Like, were you in a war or something like that? Where you get triggered right. by certain I have PTSD. PTSD from what you can what is your problem and then all these kids all these everyone's neurodivergent right everyone everyone has adhd everyone has autism everyone has asperger's everyone has add everyone has everyone's depressed right everyone is everyone has anxiety it's like and you there's a lot of self-diagnosis going on nowadays and it's kind of ridiculous no uh, uh, wait a second wait a second what what you they people just want to scut accountability for being a fucking weirdo. Yeah, whereas being a weirdo in the past, people try to suppress and they were outcast to society. Now society's full of weirdos and now being normal is just kind of looked upon as being not normal, I guess. It's really backwards. Right. It used to like the people that actually deal with this like like these personality issues that like intrinsically they are, are hard for them to change. They never, they didn't complain about it, right? They didn't go on camera speaking about how hard their life is because people won't treat them a certain way. Yeah, they didn't you know go on camera and start crying, but now right. it's like, they, all people do, people just beg for sympathy. They, they try to create a platform it. and it's just like, They said, up. I'm entitled to a change in this environment because the environment does not suit me, right? Like, what about all the other millions of people that go through that same environment every day like exactly so special why are you so exactly it's completely like, what are you okay i get like there, there's been savants like autistic savants that have went to public school like did terribly in school because they're not good at tests but guess what they the the limitation that they had in their environment they didn't complain about it they just said that when they were put in a when they were able to change their into a new environment, so that's savant. what they uh, huh? You said a savant, what is that? Yeah, artistic, like some uh, a very uh talented in a particular way, like uh, uh, essentially a genius in a certain way, okay. like an intellectual, they can, yeah. They make they really are good at identifying patterns very quickly and then uh, making uh, some type of uh creation, whether that's math, art, or uh yeah usually i've seen it in math or art or memory or yeah all those types of things like those type of savant skills okay yeah so like a genius basically so even them that don't have environments that are uh, that are curtailed to them being able to perform the best once once they can you know, one, they create their own environment and don't try to change the environment for everyone else, right? Yeah. They just say, me specifically. So do they live in America? Who, savants? Yeah, these people that you're referring They're to? They're all over the world. Well, that's the thing with Western, modern Western culture where it's just like, nowadays people are given so many tools to succeed, like, I don't know, chat GPT or whatever. 
and this AI software, this AI, which mind you, I do use, but right. I use it more as like a, I don't use it as a crutch. I may sort of, I more so use it as a, an enhancement tool. So I could write, I could write a whole essay or whatever, but it's just like, or I, I could write a whole email or do this, that, and the other, but like, there may be like a line or two that I'm like, I don't know how to convey this message. And I know the exact prompts in order to get it to sound exactly like me and make it still sound good and flow with the rest of the things. So it's good that you know, you have to know how to make the, the function of things behind the scenes and the mm-hmm. function of things like, uh, the, like how to, how to use those tools. It's just like when I started playing video games, like I had to know a couple of command line prompts when I was like a little kid, right? Like on MS DOS. If I were to bring that up to anybody in class right now, they'd probably look at me as like a freak or somebody that's from the old times. Like, cause they call me old at school. I'm like, bro, I'm only 28. I'm only like five, six, seven. Well, I'm 10 years older than some of them and six, right. seven older than others. But they look at me as this like ancient relic and they make all these, I, I go, I'll use one of their favorite words, ageist jokes or whatever. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really care, but I just think it's interesting because a lot of the times I might have some more, some things more in common with somebody that's probably 38 as opposed to somebody that's 18 nowadays when it should be right. actually have in common with both. I mean, there's some things I have in common with people that are like 18, but at the same time, like they were born in 2005, which is like kind of mind blowing to me. It's insane. Like how yeah, are you, like, how are you not still in your daddy's sack? Like exactly. what are you talking about? Like you're just a tadpole, just not not even sperm. You're just a tadpole just swimming around. Like you don't exist. Like how are people just born after the nineties? It's, it's just doesn't, exactly cannot wrap that concept around them. The, doesn't exist. They will always forever be children on the playground that don't know how to tie their shoes to me. It, the year could be two thousand ninety and I will still say the exact same thing. Right. You are a little kid. Don't talk right. to me. Even though we're all, you're still a little kid. But yeah, it's it's just absolutely bizarre to me, man, that that um yeah, modern people they just don't they just don't know how to like they don't know how to um be confident. There's like this false confidence like message right. that people are saying nowadays. I'm just like if you were confident, you wouldn't be online and trying to seek validation. And that's why people think I'm so weird because like I said, I'm not giving out my Instagram like that and yeah, no literally i probably lost opportunities because i don't give out my instagram i get more so opportunities and friendship but that's why i relate to people that are older than me because it's just like they're not going around asking oh what's your instagram oh what's your instagram i mean in certain cases if it's in terms of networking and we're mm. we're within the same niche or niche whatever it is and we're both like actors or we both like in film or whatever. We're both artists. We both do this. We both do that. I'm like, okay, I'll follow your page because it, it is of my interests. But I have no desire to look at like a bunch of a bunch of stupid posts that have nothing to do with drama, a bunch of stupid screenshots with redacted stupid information that I'm like, why are you posting this anyway? Like, shut the hell up. And um, yeah, it just... It's just it's just pointless to me. Like the whole competition, the whole fall for fall, like for like, I'm like I've done all this. I've been there, done that. But it's just like I grew out of it. And Bro, people are so stuck in this this mindset, or they never grow out of, or grow. They actually grow into it. So it's like people are defaulting in that sense. It's, it's right. Very that's their default. Is like you. That that's a thing about you gr- going to school with these people that uh, that grew up with all this technology available. Yeah, it's weird. I'm like, I I mean, like we never grew up without too. It. Yeah, yeah. It's just like we had best of both worlds. Where it's just like, and it's weird because they played outside too, but like they were still like pretty like youngish. You know, it's like the crossover period. Whereas with like us, a good percentage. Honestly, I didn't really get into social media like that until I was like eighteen. Really. Yes. About the same. Yeah. And I got a flip phone, I kid you not, until like 2010. 
And I thought I was late to the game back then. I was just like embarrassed to tell them, like, yeah, I have a flip phone. And they're like, oh, you finally have a phone? Because I would just call people on the house phone. So I'm like, I know what it's like to have to talk to somebody's parents and talk to some people do this, that, and the other. And then like you're on the phone trying to talk with some girls or whatever. And then your parents are quietly listening and then they interject, like, because they're like, oh no, we've been listening for the last 20 years. I know that level of fear. Right. They have no idea. So it's like those kind of skills are ingrained within me where it's just like right. you know how to think critically. They don't have that. They don't even know what it's like to stay up until 9 p.m. in order to get oh the free uh talk time or whatever like right and they don't have and they that asset also gives them a loss of respect for for other people right and because as as empathetic as they they think they are considering other people's emotions stuff they are they are the most entitled generation so it's like do you 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 like they forget that their parents do things for them? They think that unless of course they're, they're like a child and they're bringing in the money because their parents put them on the internet or something. But their parents are the reason why they have everything if they don't have a job. And then it's like this is mine. Like this is my room. This yeah, is like my the kids room. at my school. Like they all, a majority of them live at home. And then they complain of this, that, and the other. I'm not saying parents can't be toxic, but I'm just like right. I think I'm, literally, I'm living on my own. And I had to like fight tooth and nail to get this opportunities. And it's just like, I, 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 it's just me. Like, yeah, I have a family support, but family support. But um, like, how are you guys so unambitious and you have way more opportunities than I do? And I've, I have plenty of struggles in my life and I'm succeeding. And again, this does have a lot to do with like Western values and cultures and customs, which is kind of a accumulation of all the events that have happened for the last 400 years or a little bit more. But um, has definitely gotten, again, to uh, prove what, what the, the, like the professors are saying in my school, the librarians, everybody, the people that even went to that the same school are saying that, yeah, within the last 10 to seven-ish years that the kids are just like unteachable and they right. don't they, they think, they're, really, they they think they know everything. Thing. They don't. And they're they not really know anything. They don't want to correct their wrong because they think they have moral superiority because and of like something. you don't. If anything, I think you guys are a lot more intolerant. Right. A lot more intolerant. They're, and they feel like they're so inclusive. They're so inc- you no, you're not. You you're a you're a rag doll. You're you're being you're a puppet. You're being played with you you're so mentally unstable because of of your your antisocial behaviors and the crutches that you use that everything that you were fed that was that was propaganda to you you accepted it and there was no filter for it it's just like huh is that actually true no oh. there's literally none of that whereas people literally just looking at old videos of like just you know even people that they that were that age back that were in their 20s and teens or whatever back then the critical thinking skills will yeah be way more critical through. even like i'm thinking back to conversations i had in middle school about politics and yeah i remember plenty of republican friends and they would always say hey don't let our political views like stop us from being friends let's have a civil discussion about it and we could come to a common agreement i literally remember people saying this right, right. but yeah like nowadays yeah you dare say anything again i'm not trying to like choose sides or anything but you dare say like anything to anyone and it's just like both sides will ostracize you you have to have a balance and the reason why our society it's is so people is because um why one side is just too it's much so people. loud yeah it's just it's ridiculous um we're gonna i guess restart it from yeah we're going- i don't know it, it, people it, the generations before used to have uh uh a base level of respect for one another were it's yeah. like okay, you may not you may not agree, but I'm going to treat you like a human being because you go to work to pay your bills, I go to work to pay my bills, and the enemy is the person that doesn't give us both what we want in the workforce and the government is the person that we should be directing our anger towards if we're not getting what we want, right? Not each other, right? But now it's like people feel personally attacked if you disagree with how the way that it. If you have a difference of opinion in the way the world should, uh, people should What's solve the problem. People also get mad at you if you agree with them. I thought people get mad because I do agree with them. I'm like, I'm literally agreeing with what you say. It's like you literally, 
I literally met another girl. She was just like, she says she enjoys confrontation. I'm like, right. I'm like, oh, so you? She's like, yeah, no, I genuinely enjoy conversation. They like, like to argue. Fuck? Yeah, they get and I'm turned like, on by it. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? So yeah, I'm like, that's how I know this entire fucking campus is just full of mentally fucking ill people. I love my school, but like, some of these students, man, they're just they're a lost cause. Like, and it's like right, and then they make and and like even like to that to that point, it's like there's a lot of people saying. You need to go to therapy. It's like, okay, imagine if I did that. Okay, when would it end? It's like, no, you need to, oh, everyone always needs to be in therapy. There's so much more. You do realize there should be a graduation point for therapy where you become self-aware of your contributions to your own life and your choices and your lifestyle, how it's affecting your mind. And, and, and yeah, it's and too much work. Right. It's just like, I just read this article um, as we're talk- talking. It says high school lo- student lose a scholarship after video of her twerking um, good girl name is kaylee uh, timonette and she's a senior at walker high school in louisiana she's removed as the student governor government president after a video of her dancing behind a woman twerking at homecoming draws principal's ire so yeah it's like i wonder if she told people to record her I like her in the moment doing stuff like that. I I don't know if I agree necessarily with her having her whole scholarships removed. That's the prerogative of the school. She should have looked up their policy and but yeah, the, yeah. But on the flip side, yeah, in terms of like laws and everything like that. So from a moral standpoint, I don't really care. But from like a a legal standpoint, yeah, it probably is in violation of the school's policy. So it is. Uh, it, it's it's a. Uh, it's an offense that people should remove you from power. You're the school's president. You're an ambassador of the school, and you represent the school. So if you're publicly doing this, they right. have your choice because it's going to make that organization you represent look bad. So exactly because it's, it's but people can't think like that. Schools Here, don't. Let me send you this article. Right, schools schools don't want people to be getting pregnant on their yeah, campus. and then also like, uh, yeah, if then yeah, because then people are going like to be school. cancel the school saying like, oh, you're letting an underage girl. Uh, twerk on people blah blah you guys are terrible blah blah but i'm like they had no choice but to do this but people again would encourage this behavior right it's like she's a female how dare you d- repress her sexuality she's a teenage girl that should but be aren't told you the same guys do. that are saying oh underage this under like make it make sense like right you're about it or you're not about it who's going to you think me, only i kind of been different i don't really care because this is not me i'm not the one losing a scholarship right. but if i were in her shoes i wouldn't have done that and i also would it be i'd be smart enough not to record me doing something like that especially when i'm in the process of trying to apply to colleges uh she was she wasn't even the one twerking she was getting danced on yeah was left crying hysterically after losing her tie when potential college scholarships were dancing with her friends Wow. Okay. Wow. She had a four laughing. Grade. Uh, she was seen laughing and gyrating with her friends, but the principal didn't see uh, the funny side of it. Was she wasn't living the law in the law? She was going to a, a Christian school, dude. Oh, well, that of course. makes that even means, what, more bloody sense. Oh, well, that's I just why. started because I'm like, this doesn't this is what sound like. A- Oh, this is what she said. I started crying hysterically. They basically told me I should be ashamed of myself and that they were concerned about my afterlife if I wasn't following basically God's ideals, which made me cry even more. This girl does not look like she represents Christ at all anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of surprised she goes to Christian school. But um, yeah, if you're the, it, it literally says, oh, wait a minute, I'm confused. Now it says it's a public school, not a private school. He has no right to discuss any sort of religion with my child. Wait, is it a private school or is it a public school? Wait, if it's what? a public school, then unless there's some specific, I mean, I guess there are specific rules regarding that sort of touching or whatever. And so it's totally, they probably handle things on a case by case basis. Obviously, this guy doesn't contone this behavior and therefore he feels the need to remove her from power. Because, I mean, sure, if she were somebody that wasn't so high profile, then they wouldn't have cared. But because she was so visible, they had to just make a difference in some sort of way and hold her accountable in in that regard. Um, 
Wow, that is cool. She was so distraught at the punishment, she had to leave school because she was crying too much. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty wild. It's also Louisiana. I mean, like, they're very Catholic there. Like, it, the, the whole state is like that. It's very religious. I mean. And then she says the video was not inappropriate whatsoever, she said. What? The mother said that. Excuse me? Critical thinking is out the window, proving my point. Goodness gracious. It says, I was physically there watching her do it. If I would have thought it was inappropriate anyway, I would have corrected my child. What? Probably not, but wow. people are always trying to enable their kids nowadays and always say that they're in the right. So I highly doubt, even if something wrong were going, I doubt she would have even intervened that quickly. Doubt it. Oh, but they said it didn't happen at school. It was an after party. Yeah, there was a, a private event. So that's kind of where the controversy lies. Um, but again, somebody took the liberty to re record that video. Right. So it's like, people have always done crazy shit like that, but they were smart enough not to record doing something. Exactly. Like person. People love to... This is why, like, if Jeffrey Dahmer and all those serial killers were alive nowadays, they would have a field day because it's just like you make yourself such a target. Right. That That's the thing about it. And like, that's why I'm just like, why do I need to follow you guys in social media? Because, like, I know you guys don't have my best interest in heart. Say if you just stop talking to me tomorrow, you're still going to follow me and then try to sabotage me? No, I don't want that. Social media is about connecting generally with people that are closer to you and the people that are celebrities or whatever well they they just have a following so it's just going to translate to them having a lot of followers not just a i like i like someone that keeps their life more mysterious anyway yeah it's, it's like, more interesting it's like then i have to get to know you rather than you see a persona of my life like just presented then it's just like well i don't need to talk to you or date you because i already saw everything about you that's why relationships don't really last now Right, because you're sharing everything with everyone. You it doesn't feel special, right? Yeah, there's not that much intimacy now. Like even even celebrities, it's like the 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 still the biggest celebrities. You are the ones that like. I don't know if I can really say that. I think the ones I respect the most are the ones I know the least about. Yeah, you I, know, like Denzel Washington is not making posts on. On Instagram, or, right? Like, what is like, he doing right now? Like, who else? Uh, Michael Jackson at his at his point. Give like, a better who, example. What the hell is Eddie Murphy doing? Eddie Murphy, right? What is he doing? He's probably working on some movies, but we don't know. He has like eleven. He's enjoying it his life. I haven't heard of a single project he's been involved. Oh, except for coming to America, that but that was like the sucked. last. Yeah, I didn't even watch it. I kind of heard it wasn't. The best of the best, but like, oh, the original location in Queens, the McDowell's is still up. Is it's, it still up? But it's oh, yeah, it's, it's a real place. It's in Queens. Oh, they serve fruit there. Yeah. What do they serve? Is it just like? Well, I never actually went inside, but I guess it is just like a bootleg McDonald's. Mm. Uh, I know I, it's literally in Queens. I like, I found it. I was like, oh, that's from the movie. I mean, I found it many years ago, obviously, but like mm -hmm. I, I remembered like last year. I'm like, wait a minute, a place it exists. Yeah, but I, I, I think it, to wrap this up, right? Uh, ultimately, uh, individual individualization is 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 becoming uh, a rarity, a rarity, and also uh, that is the the. The thing everyone's trying to achieve in the exact same way, and every most people are failing, right? And it is most, funny, and I will sit here and laugh at you, right? And uh, and and I think it all it takes is uh, is 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 some insults towards your way, build some character, right? Uh, yeah, some, some discipline, burns, some insults, may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, yes. Unless you're a feminist, then there'll always be something to offend you. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, but I hope, I, I hope we can uh, start this back up and, and I'll try to watch the internet to see if there's some... some yeah, so guys, keep listening stories. for um, more episodes. We're going to continue the post. So 
to everyone that listened and got this far, we really appreciate you listening to our conversation. Hopefully you learned something. Or if you're offended, again, please DM me or please comment on the video or give us a suggestion of what we should talk about next. And that concludes our podcast. Thank you guys for watching. Breathing is highly dangerous or listening to our podcast. You can follow our page. You can follow me at at OG Miller Fernandez on Instagram and Twitter, even though I don't really post much on Twitter, but if I had enough followers, I'd probably start posting. And that concludes this podcast. You guys have a great rest of your day. Be blessed, stay blessed, and we will see you all in the next one. Peace.